Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's official visit to China from October the 25th to the 27th is the first formal visit by a Japanese Prime Minister in seven years, reciprocating Chinese Premier Li Keqiang's visit to Japan in May this year. Deepening political trust, expanding economic ties and promoting Sino-Japanese cooperation in third-party countries are prioritized. While the social foundation of bilateral ties remains fragile, how do we gauge a rapprochement between the two Asian giants? Is Sino-Japanese cooperation in third-party countries sustainable? And how can both sides use history for their future? To discuss these issues and more, I'm happy to be joined in the studio by Mr. Gui Yong Tao, an associate professor at the School of International Studies at Peking University, Mr. Rong Ying, the vice president and senior research fellow at the China Institute of International Studies, and Mr. Takisato Watanabe, professor emeritus at the Shisha University. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Pan Dong. Professor Watanabe, I'd like to start with you. Shinzo Abe chose China as his first stop overseas when he was first elected Japanese Prime Minister. And during that visit, he said the future of China-Japan relations will have no clouds. Now, looking at ups and downs in the ties during his second term, politically speaking, do you think Shinzo Abe is still the very same politician 12 years ago? He is changing in the special field, like the you see, uh, changing of the constitution. Uh, he is moving uh, like this, but economically, you see, uh, he recognizes the importance only with the United States. So this is also unstable because in Asia, especially northern part of Asia, China, South Korea. Japan should be cooperated together with the United States, but in his mind, China was not, you see, existing so far. So he must, you see, uh, change, gradually improve the relations with China. Is that very urgent for him today? Politically, you see, his supporting rate is getting down, even after his third is being elected as prime minister. So uh, I think uh, he is put into psychological difficulty mm. in the next coming election of the upper house. Mm. Uh, Professor Gui, some analysts are saying that 12 years ago, Shinzo Abe's first visit to China as prime minister is to four eyes caused by his then predecessor Junichiro Kuizumi and this time he's here to maybe thaw the eyes caused by himself in the past uh, several years. Do you agree? Well to some extent uh, that is true because when uh, Shinzo Abe became Prime Minister in 2012 for the second time uh, the bilateral relations between China and Japan hit a historical low and the two countries focused on security issues and uh, the bilateral relations keeps uh, deteriorating. But in recent two years, particularly from 2017, Shinzo Abe has uh, uh, shown a uh, more pro positive view towards uh, the relations with China and uh, uh, the two uh, a, a countries' high officials started to resume uh, their bilateral exchanges. So that provides uh, the background of uh, this time's uh, visit to China. Mm. So what would be the starting points to pick up from that low you just mentioned? I think it is important uh, for both countries, particularly for Prime Minister Abe, to shift from the so-called political agenda to an economic agenda. And uh, as Professor Watanabe has just mentioned, it is important to uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, to uh, boost Japanese economy, including uh, well manage its uh, international economic relations, to win domestic support. And currently, both China and Japan are facing uh, common challenges particularly in trade relations with the United States. So I think that uh, by this visit, uh, which, will, which is aimed at improving the bilateral economic relations, this will definitely win more popularity uh, for Prime Minister Abe in Japan. And Mr. Rong, talking about trade, there are some uh, Japanese media reports saying that maybe there will be some kind of breakthrough in uh, trade arrangements uh, this time, whether it's bilateral or trilateral, China, South Korea, Japan, or even on a larger picture, the RCEP. Do you think that's possible this time? 
Yeah, certainly I think the uh, visit is going to give a big impetus for the bilateral economic engagement between China and Japan, and also I think for the regional sort of a negotiation, regional uh, uh, trade arrangement between China, Japan, and, as, and South Korea, and the RCEP. Uh, but but um, since the, certainly I think the three countries, and China and Japan in, uh, in particular, has been a big, the second and third largest economy, but I think for the, these regional uh, arrangement, regional uh, free trade agreement, it would uh, equally need support and understanding of other participants. So I would have more uh, sort of optimism, uh, more expectation on the bilateral front, and uh, while the regional aspect, I would see that certainly I think China, the cooperation and uh, collaboration of China, between China and Japan, certainly would uh, would be very much important, but not a decisive sort of a mm. role in, 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 in having any breakthrough, particularly on RCEP. Still, it takes uh, tremendous political trust to make breakthroughs in uh, trade. Earlier, we talked about ups and downs and lows and highs, maybe. So, what would you say are the long-lasting sticking points in Sino-Japanese ties? Well, it remains the uh, in the political front, uh, as uh, I think uh, we have seen uh, the uh, past uh, few years, either during the most difficult times and the, the uh, recent years where the relationship has seen some upward. But it's a, uh, uh, to put it in a simple way, is that uh, the consensus actually between China and Japan on how they each other view view each other's development, whether it's an opportunity, whether it's a kind of a threat, whether it's a cooperative partner or the competition. I think the past uh, few uh, years, I mean since 19, 2017, uh, Prime Minister Abe has repeatedly uh, said, and also of course with some concrete actions, to reinforce the consensus that China and Japan are cooperative partners instead of uh, kind of uh, competitors. While in the, and also I think they was pledged that they will support each other for peaceful development. And the, this visit would be, I think, a follow-up of a visit by uh, Prime, Premier Li Keqiang in May this year. And so there will be more concrete uh, uh, and uh, things coming out, in the, particularly in the economic front, and uh, and uh, that that makes I think the relationship uh, more sort of a solid. But the e political aspect remains a very important thing, mm. and uh, there are I mean certainly issues uh, also in the security area bilaterally and on the issues. So you're talking like about the territorial disputes? Exactly, territorial disputes, maritime sort of issues. Do you think the two countries will just put them aside and look forward or there should be a mechanism in place to manage this for good? I believe that the two countries will continue to have their differences. Uh, and I mean, while in the, 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 the changes, the positive thing is that it seems that the two sides have reached an agreement on the how to manage these differences or disputes to the extent that they would not affect the overall relationship of the uh, of the relationship. That's the I think a big lesson. That and a very important lesson uh, the two sides have been uh, learned over the past uh, years. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, instead of uh, uh, putting uh, the uh, the issue these issues on the top agenda, they will move to some extent, mm -hmm. hopefully in a, in a ra relatively back burner. In the meantime, working mm -hmm. together on mechanism, implement the mechanism to manage. I mean these these issues to improve through improvement of communication, effective communications. I, I learned from the press, the Japanese press, there might be some agreement or MOUs and along this mm. line. The other thing that, for example, also I would be important mm. is that uh, uh, between the, uh, the military uh, and also I think the, uh, uh, the, 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 the other related for, I mean, forces, department, so how to further sort of uh, ex uh, exchanges. Mm -hmm. and what about better. lessons from history, Professor Watanabe? Do you think the historical issue will persist or there will be some proposals from the Japanese side at this time to, to address this long-lasting issue? Prime Minister Abe doesn't want to make the historical issue on the surface of the matters of this discussion. However, 
Mr. Abe and also Vice Minister uh, <coughs> of the Cabinet, both of them, you see, their grandfathers did not good things in Korea, in China. And so uh, they don't want to discuss this matter. However, inside Japan, many things are happening. Recently, the <coughs> top priest of the Yasukuni shrine criticized the emperor who is going to pray for the spirits of the past people in the military atrocities. And priest said, it is no good for the people at present and also in the past because they are proud of their activities of the military period. So Abe is put into difficulty if he refers to this point. So uh, he has something in mind, but I don't think he doesn't say, he does say you see, anything about that. Mm. And we've talked a lot about the importance of political consensus and mutual trust. And let's trace back to the origin of that trust, which is the uh, China-Japan Treaty on Peace and Friendship. And Shinzo Abe's visit coincides with the 40th anniversary of that very document. And he said himself that this is the foundation of Sino-Japanese ties. Professor Gui, tell us the relevance of that document 40 years ago to today. Well, I think this uh, document uh, uh, indicated the start of a fast-growing China-Japan economic relationship. Uh, the 40 years ago, there was uh, exactly the time when China started its uh, reform and opening up policy. And this bilateral exchange between Japan and China has contributed a lot to China's uh, uh, following uh, policies on economic development. And uh, when we look at today's Chinese trade with Japan or Japan's investment in China, it has been hitting a historical high in recent years, despite uh, the difficulties in political relations. And uh, actually, uh, in the past two years, uh, the bilateral trade as well as the investment has resumed uh, uh, toward a direction of continuous growth. I think that this is very important uh, because uh, it is uh, the economic interests uh, between these two countries that has laid the foundation of a long, stable, and uh, forward-looking relationship. And I think that uh, this is exactly uh, uh, where that uh, the, the two countries can have agreement and uh, this is where that we can uh, uh, contribute to the welfare of those people in these two countries. Well, gentlemen, we'll be continuing this very soon. You're watching Dialogue on CGTN. Stay with us. Professor um, Watanabe, I think we would all agree that political consistency is very important in dealing with uh, foreign affairs and uh, diplomacy. Now, under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's leadership, the LDP has won three lower house elections and two upper house elections and will continue his uh, premiership until 2021, which means his tenure will serve as his five predecessors combined. Are you optimistic that the current warming up of ties will last till that year? Nobody can foresee, but you see the many journalists or intellectuals say that, you see, that the supporting weight of Mr. Abe is getting down. And also, uh, next April, we may have the upper house election. And so, uh, as a result of those uh, the events, if the uh, LDP loses uh, much more is the vote, uh, he will be put into difficulty because already they call him lame duck. This might be true from my understanding, but politicians are making utmost efforts to make their activities very effective using uh, internet, SNA. So uh, I'm not sure, but that's my personal analysis with the discussion of other, other experts. Mm. Maybe that will be happening next year, but let's uh, get back to the tasks at hand right now. So uh, we know China has its Belt and Road Initiative, and Japan also has its uh, huge investment uh, overseas. Now the two countries are talking about a third-party country cooperation uh, mechanism. How does that work, Mr. Well, yeah, I think the idea of uh, kind of a China-Japan uh, cooperation on third market or third country 
is a kind of very creative, innovative sort of uh, thing for the two countries. So we understand that uh, when China put forward that initiative, Belt and Road Initiative, Japan had a strong reservation, if not opposition to that. But the Japanese community, uh, business community, are very much enthusiastic of that. Unfortunately, I think uh, because of political relations difficulties, uh, the Japanese com uh, business community was not able to I mean, force too much. But since, as we discussed since the past uh, few years recently, uh, the I I political relations are improving, atmosphere is getting better, and the voices of uh, uh, Japanese business community together with the Chinese I mean, community so started to look for possibility of that. In the context of that, while the political uh, sort of uh, politically Japan mm -hmm. still f have some reservations so came up the term this uh, the idea of third uh, party or third sort of market cooperation and during the visit it was reported that there was a big sort of forum yeah, I mean of, of uh, participated by over 1040 business uh, sort of men I mean for exploring means and ways to in to push for that cooperation. And uh, Japanese media has been speculating that there will be 50 sort of MOUs agreement will be signed covering joint financing, infra, infra, I mean, uh, in, in insurances, and other related uh, fields. So that, what that would bring the uh, coming, give full play of mm -hmm. the, uh, each other's uh, sort of advantage for the benefit, uh, certainly for the two uh, countries, I mean the business community, but more importantly for the third party or third market. So this is a very big, I think, uh, development and very positive in terms of China-Japan economic uh, sort of or practical cooperation. Very much, I think. Uh, hopeful as I am concerned. Right, and Professor Gui, earlier you said Shinzo Abe is shifting from a political agenda to an economic agenda. And interestingly, in this specific topic, the third party mm. country cooperation, it requires both political and economic confidence and trust. What, could you be, what would you say could be some uh, pivotal projects to, to start this? Well, uh, it is uh, still under discussion, but uh, it is also reported that uh, uh, there are dozens of projects uh, that uh, the two sides can uh, cooperate. And mainly it is between uh, the enterprises of uh, both countries. And the government plays a role of offering opportunities uh, for these enterprises to cooperate. And it could be uh, infrastructure building in Africa or some uh, the, uh, joint development of some industrial uh, area in uh, Southeast Asian areas. Uh, I think that uh, in this process, uh, many Japanese uh, uh, advanced technologies, as well as Chinese uh, business compet com um, competitive, can uh, combine uh, to be uh, an even stronger uh, economic uh, power uh, in helping uh, the other countries in boosting their uh, infra infrastructure and economic development. I think here what is important is that uh, uh, particularly in Japan, uh, uh, the, some, some politicians should not, uh, must not politicize uh, these projects. They should uh, focus on economic benefits that these uh, cooperative projects can produce. And uh, that will, let's say, uh, dispel the suspicion or doubts uh, in Japan about uh, the consequences of these projects. And now let's talk about business. Professor Watanabe, uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe this time is accompanied by 500 members from business delegation covering nearly all the big names in Japan. What are the key areas they are looking for cooperation with China this time? Mr. Abe, you see, uh, he opened the idea of the a consumption tax increase from 8 to 10 uh, next year, maybe in September like that, so, 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 as, so as to cover the uh, minus points of this you see, proposal, he has to make the political you see, spectacles, not the contents, how you see some kind of the uh, policies would make the, some appearance. So it might be uh, one belt you see, uh, idea, or some very close to the relations with China. Mm -hmm. But for him, the, the actual contents of that project is not a problem. But if he can persuade journalists and the people of Japan that 
propose, his proposals would be very, very effective for economic development. So I'm not sure, you see, uh, what kind of idea he has in mind, actually. But only he wants to do is some spectacles before the people. But what are the sentiments you've been getting from Japanese business? What are they looking for? What kind of opportunity are they looking for? Because right now, China is deepening its reform and opening up. For example, the first ever China International Import Expo is about to happen in uh, Shanghai. Obviously, huge opportunities for the world's largest uh, consumer market. What are the Japanese businesses are looking for this time? As far as you see, the Mr. Trump of America keeps the uh, traditional way of the economic development for himself or for the lower class of America, uh, Mr. Abe has to pay attention to or shake hands with China because China is the, the biggest economic power in northern part of Asia. Then he must shake hands with India and South Korea. So uh, China must come first. For the China, uh, you see, one belt, you see, uh, idea is the must for you and also uh, for Mr. Abe's imagination. Mm. So you're saying that he's also playing some kind of balancing acts in the economic arena as well? That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. And what about this uh, potential you've been witnessing in China, Mr. Ron, in terms of economic cooperation? Yeah, I think the uh, China's economy is undergoing a dramatic and uh, sort of a transformation by upgrading and I mean uh, opening uh, reform and opening wider to the world. As we discussed, that uh, uh, the uh, China's reform and opening up coincide with coincide with the signing of that treat, uh, treaty for friendship and cooperation. And uh, in the past 40 years, I think Japan has played a very important role uh, in this process and of course in the process Japanese uh, business community has also benefited a lot. It's always a kind of win-win cooperation. Mm, they invested a lot. Yeah, exactly, well. exactly. And looking ahead as the China, I mean the huge market, great potential and Japan is also need for bigger market. So there are a lot of opportunities. But it seems that there are need for more new sort of areas, new initiatives. I think the... Uh, what the could be the these new areas? Yeah, there are quite a lot. The mm. Japanese are all in all I still have a lot of uh, sort of uh, uh, technologies. Uh, I mean so you think high technology? High innovation and area. other key areas and mm. other things, financing and also even the, I mean the management of aging population, mm. the, day, the caring things, the medicals, there's a lot. Since you mentioned uh, financial cooperation, let's talk about this possible also reported by Japanese media, a massive currency swap deal between the two central banks. What does that tell? Do you think that will actually happen, Professor Gui? Well, I think that uh, this could be agreed by the two governments, and basically this has in, will be indicating uh, a deepening uh, uh, trust between the two countries. Uh, this kind of provides a, a guarantee for any future. Uh, problems in uh, the economy in this region. And I also think it is important that uh, for the Japanese community, in the long run, the Chinese market will definitely be the largest foreign market for Japanese business. Currently, it's already the largest, but uh, uh, given the fact that uh, the investment environment in the United States could deteriorate due to President Trump's policies, I think that uh, uh, the Chinese market will be much more attractive for the Japanese community and uh, there's a lot uh, to be done uh, to make this happen, this, uh, to turn these opportunities into real benefits in mm. the future. Now let's turn to a relatively softer side of uh, diplomacy, that is people to people exchanges or you may call it public mm. diplomacy. Uh, Professor Gui, you're a uh, scholar uh, focused on Japanese uh, studies. What role do you think people to people exchanges may sound like a big concept mm -hmm. but uh, can that actually help official diplomacy and mutual trust build? I think that this is essential uh, for the two countries uh, in terms of improving uh, their uh, mutual trust. Uh, when we look at the public opinion um, surveys in recent, uh, recent years, uh, actually uh, the uh, both Chinese opinion of Japan, Japan's opinion uh, of China is gradually improving 
And the major factor in contributing this kind of improvement is the people-to-people -people exchanges. It is reported that uh, as many as 8 million Chinese tourists will be visiting in Japan this year. At the same time, uh, we have more than uh, 100,000 uh, Chinese students who are currently studying in Japan. And these Chinese people have uh, presented a very good image among the Japanese public. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in the future, uh, when more and more Japanese businessmen uh, come into China and uh, experienced uh, the uh, business environment, uh, making fortunes and exploring opportunities, uh, there will be better images even very many developed between these two countries. Yes, so definitely, I think that uh, the two uh, people should be uh, understanding each other uh, in a more accurate and positive way. And this effort has been uh, promoted from the official levels as well. I recall that uh, uh, several years ago, China and Japan had this uh, joint working group formed by scholars on historical issues. Now, if, let's say, political trust will improve after this Times visit. Do you think uh, activities like this uh, could happen again, Professor Watanabe? Uh, <coughs> Mr. Abe wants to keep the good relations without referring to the historical issues. However, pressure from the citizen side is so great. And also, you see, among even the Chinese people, uh, table tennis player Ai Chan, for instance, she is loved by all the generation. Uh, in here and also in Taiwan and in Japan. This is, the, she is a symbol of the people's people diplomacy. And also Chinese players in sports, in Asian games like that, they are doing very nicely. Mm -hmm. And Japanese people raises a lot. This kind of the feeling created by the mass media might change or might go into the bottom of the psychology of the business people. Mm -hmm. And one more thing is that business in China products, business products in Japan are now going to, into the same area. 10, 20 years ago, the low cost products were produced in here, in, in Japan, vice versa, like this. So now we are going to a very difficult situation in trade. Mm. Mm. Now let's hope for the best the best to happen between the two close Asian neighbors. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for our input. And that's it for this edition of Dialogue on CGTN. I'm Pandang in Beijing. Bye-bye.